Welcome back to the Reload Bench. Six years ago, I purchased this hammer buttstock from the Double Star Corporation. I was looking to get something a little bit different for one of my AR-15s, and I came across this kind of by mistake. I really wasn't looking for this one in particular. I was looking at different buttstocks that were available, and there were different features about this that sort of appealed to me. Now, it is a little bit pricey for an AR-15 buttstock, but it's definitely worth the money in my opinion. Some of the features that drew me to this were, first off, that it's made in America. Secondly, that it's big and beefy. That kind of made me think that it was going to be heavy duty, really kind of durable, and kind of add some weight to the rifle. Now, a lot of people like to build rifles as light as possible. I like heavy guns. So I wanted something heavier for a buttstock, if at all possible. It's got a seven position tube, which really allows a, a lot of variation depending on the stature of the shooter. The cheek rest is adjustable. I, I have it all the way down, but I can raise it up. And I may be doing that with this rifle here uh, very, very soon. It's also got a rubber butt pad here in the back. And not that the 5.56 has any, any real kick to it. It doesn't. But the the rubber butt pad was kind of a um kind of a, a just an extra feature just uh something that kind of made me think that if I ever did step up my game and I needed something to mitigate recoil this would definitely do the job there's also different points where you can attach a sling swivel now the stock is actuated by a lever that's underneath it would be right here kind of like on a, on a magpul now Originally, I put this on a rifle that was chambered in 5.56. I took it to the range twice, but for the most part, over the six years, the stock sat in the safe. Actually, I owned the stock for a year before I even put it on a rifle. So for the first year, it was still in the packaging. I put it on a rifle that only went out to the range twice in five years. Not, it didn't really see a lot of use. It more or less sat in the safe. Recently, I took the lower and I put a 450 Bushmaster upper on it. And this, this stock definitely helps. There's, there's no recoil at all with the 450 Bushmaster with this hammer butt stock. But something I noticed on one of the range trips where I was test firing the rifle is that there were some parts at my feet on the ground. And I realized that the parts were the lever assembly and the pin that holds it in place to move the butt stock. Fortunately, I've got it out at the position all the way maxed out. That's where I, I shoot at. So the rifle is still usable. However, I thought, you know, they, they, they don't really say lifetime warranty on the website. What they say is hassle-free returns. And for the price and the fact that it's made in America by a reputable company, I thought I'd go ahead and contact them and see if they would replace it under warranty. So I sent an email with some pictures of just the uh, the pieces and just explain what had happened, how long I had owned it. And I did manage to find a scanned image of the receipt. I don't know if they would actually need that, but I try to keep records of everything that I buy. And it took some digging because it's it's been six years, but I found it. I included all that in the email. A few days later, they got back to me and apologized they, they that they didn't get back to me sooner because they had been dealing with Black Friday stuff and things like that. And they... They said that they would send me a label so that I could take the stock off and ship it back to them. Well, a few days after that, they got a hold of me and said, we've been busy. We forgot to send you the label. How about if we just send you a stock and a label? You'll, you'll have your new stock right away and just send us back the old stock. So that's what's in this box right here that I'm going to be opening up. It came in... Uh, uh, about three days after the last email I got, they sent it U.S. mail today, and uh, it arrived right there in my mailbox. So I've had it. I've had it for a few days. I haven't really made the time to to go ahead and take this off. I thought I would make a little bit of a video about this, just to share my experience uh, about the customer service I got with Double Star, and more or less uh, to to just do an unboxing that uh, six years ago I wasn't making YouTube videos. So, let's get this open and just see what all comes in the box. All right. Let's get the box open here. 
put the right side up. The box came in really good condition. It's taped up really well. Let's see what all is in here. So we've got a double star decal. We've got another double star decal and I've got a USPS priority mail return with an RMA number on it. I'll put that off to the side. Plenty of gratuitous packaging material in here. I'll be reusing that. Let's get the box out of the way. And here it is in a reclosable plastic bag, the hammer butt stock. Let's go ahead and open this up. There's instructions on how to install it. It comes with, in this small reclosable bag here, couple of little screws and a washer and there is a uh, sling swivel there's three holes here uh, in the bottom base of the buttstock and I should just be able to snap this in there we go sling swivel in position all right I had a short little pause there so I could read the instructions the screws and this plastic washer that come in this small reclosable bag are for the butt pad at the end now if you take a look at the buttstock I have, the one I ordered six years ago, it's got almost a one inch thick rubber butt pad on there. The replacement they sent me has got something that's about a quarter inch thick, and I'm pretty sure this is hard plastic. So I should be able to exchange those. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna use a one eighth Allen wrench and simply remove these screws. Go ahead and break them all free. All right, there you go. You can just see the skeletonized kind of rear assembly here of the buttstock. So I'll go ahead and remove this plate and these screws off to the side. I'll be sending that back. So for the rubber butt pad, the holes for the screws are recessed down in there, but I am able to get the short end of the hex key in there in order to apply enough torque to break it free. Give it a couple spins. Get to the third one here on the bottom. You have to kind of feel around in there for it. Once I've gotten it free, applied enough torque to it with the short end, I can take the longer end And simply unscrew it. All right, I've got it removed. Set this off to the side. And I can go ahead and 
just simply attach this shouldn't require anything it's already set up so I won't even be using the screws that were included I'll just take the long end of the hex key and run the screw down until I don't feel any resistance and then just go to another screw. With all three snug, I'll go ahead and switch to the short end and just give it a, not even a quarter turn, just to snug it down. Now that I've got the original butt pad attached to the replacement stock, it's time to take the original damaged stock off the lower receiver. This is very easy to do. You don't need an armorer's wrench. So there's a sleeve here that attaches at the base of the tube right behind the threaded part of the lower receiver the buffer tube slides into. Use a 3 16 Allen wrench and you just loosen the socket head cap screw. You want to give it a few turns. It'll, it'll slide loose and slide back on the buffer tube, but if it gets hung up, you're going to have to loosen it a little bit more. So you're going to have to have the stock in a rearward position, but you don't have to have it all the way back. Once you slide that collar off, the buffer tube will spin. So go ahead and have your thumb over the detent and just spin out the buffer tube. I've already removed the buffer and the spring, obviously. I guess I should say that. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the detent and the spring and inspect it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply some grease. I put synthetic grease on all of the, the springs. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply some grease to this before I put it back in. So I simply apply some royal purple synthetic grease to the detent spring. Just use this old toothbrush that I keep in the in the tube of grease. I'm kind of slathering it on there. You really don't need to put a whole lot. Full synthetic grease pretty much lasts, um, well, it can, it can last a really long time. But since I've got it out, I decided to put that in there. So let me get this wiped up. I don't want to be assembling this with grease on my fingers. So I've got the detent setting in there. So now I'm simply going to depress the lever on the stock and slide the buffer tube forward. I'll go ahead and slide it all the way forward. Now there is a lock on this. You've got to pull on this knurled knob here on the end and twist it in a way that locks the lever in place. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll simply just screw in the buffer tube. If it gets close to the detent, I'll depress it with my thumb. Yep. All right, that collar is already bumping against it. So let me loosen that up. Loosen up the socket head screw. Once again, 3 16 Allen wrench. Just back it off and slide it backwards onto the buffer tube. Let me back it off a little bit more. Should. So 
slide back. All right, keep screwing this in, holding down the detent. Back it off just a hair. That should be lined up. And all I have to do is slide this collar all the way forward so it's flush. And then tighten down this socket head cap screw. Go ahead and switch to the short end of the hex key. Put a little torque on there. And there we go. Detents in place. Let me go ahead and unlock the lever back here. Should be able to just twist it and pull it. There we go. Now the buffer spring and buffer. Just inspect this. Let me go ahead and wipe this off. Just get an old towel here. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit of the same royal purple grease. Now I could use CLP, ordinarily that's what I'd use. But that grease will work just fine for what I'm doing. So, let's see if this thing moves into the different positions. It does. And since I'm here, I might as well go ahead and show how to adjust the cheek riser. So you take a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench and you loosen up the button head cap screw one on either side just loosen it up and you can slide this <laughs> be careful not to slide it all the way off and there's washers in there so you got to make sure everything's lined up just right there we go so with the washers behind the head of the button head cap screw and in the slot provided you're gonna have to kind of finagle it a little bit back and forth you're gonna have to articulate it with both hands in order to get it lined up simply just tighten down the button head cap screws on either side and now the cheek rest is setting up higher. And I can adjust this back down to whatever I want at a later point. All right, I've moved the pins on the lower. I've got the upper. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the upper and lower together here and lock the front pin. Wiggle, wiggle, there it is. There's the back pin. And now I've got to attach the Magpul sling, which already has the Magpul quick disconnect on it. So let me slide this one out and put that in. All right, that's good to go. Here, I'll go ahead and show how you can attach it at the top if you'd like. There you go. Another point for it to rattle. And there we go. My double star hammer buttstock replaced under warranty after owning it for six years. So now all I have to do is get the broken stock back to double star. If it doesn't fit in the box because it's in the fully extended position, I'll get another box for it. I'll get that shipped back out to them with the return label that they provided. I've got to do one more thing to the rifle, and then it's time to get it back out to the range. Hopefully somebody found this useful. I'll include a link to Double Star to the Hammer Buttstock. If you're interested in buying it for yourself, 
I would recommend it, especially if you've got a 450 Bushmaster AR. Thanks for watching.